<laughs> yeah. How many of you have seen promos for Watson on TV already? I can't see you applaud. Sorry. <laughs> awesome. So how many of you have actually heard something in the trades about Watson? So this will give you a good taste of what you might see on uh, February 14th through the 16th on uh, our Jeopardy program. Uh, Cindy, you're in our first position. You're going to start us off. Let's take a ahead and look at our categories, and these are what you're going to play for this single Jeopardy round. We start off with scene of the crime, followed by tennis vocabulary, anyone? Laundry detergent, always in fashion, presidential rhyme time, and followed by those animals frighten me. All right? How do you feel about those categories, guys? <laughs> like deer in headlights, really. It's really, really something special, isn't it? All right. All right, we're going to get started. Cindy, you start us off. Go ahead and pick away. Tennis vocabulary, anyone, for 200. 200, start at the top. Here we go. An aviator with five air kills. Cindy. What is ace? Ace is correct. It's an untouched serve. Nicely done. One more thing. If you know the answer, shut your mouths. We don't want to hear from you. Just a little FYI. All right, these are the players that are playing on stage. There's a reason they're standing up here, and you're all sitting down there. Yeah, okay. That's the clue I want to give you. All right, Cindy, good job. You got 200 bucks on the board. Go ahead and choose again. Tennis, anyone? Tennis vocabulary, anyone for 400 400 dollars. Here it is. A crack in the Earth's crust. Watson, what is cold? Vault is correct. Nicely done. Okay, let's take a second here before we move on. Don't applaud him. Shame on you. <laughs> All right, so you see fault, fracture, and volcanoes. So the possible answer to the question, a crack in the Earth's crust, volcanoes, not really appropriate. Uh, Watson has come up with much worse, believe me. Uh, so he only had 12% confidence that volcanoes was the correct answer. 17% uh, was fracture, and he was only 62% uh, confident that that uh, fault was the actual correct response to that question. That actually was the correct response, and he took a stab because, as uh, Dr. Brown explained earlier, if his confidence is higher than the threshold, that white line, that uh, vertical line that you see there, he will ring in. So there's a little explanation on that. Watson, you got it right. You got 400 bucks in your pocket. Go ahead, choose again, Watson. Scene of the crime for 200. Scene of the crime for two. On January 17, 1950, robbers made off with $2.7 million from the Briggs Bank near this city's Charleston Bridge. Lit a city. What is Boston? Boston is the city. Nicely done. Good job. All right, go ahead, city. Tennis vocabulary went for 600. Tennis it is for six. The retinue of a reigning monarch. Cindy. What is train? No. Watson or Stephen? <laughs> Correct answer is what is court? What is a court? Retinue of a reigning monarch. Kind of headed up there, 26%. Go ahead, Cindy. Tennis, anyone? Uh, 800. $800. An automobile race run over public roads. Watson. What is rally? Rally, that's exactly right. Tennis uh, term for back and forth. Nicely done, Watson. Good for 800. Choose again. Scene of the crime for 400. JFK was shot, uh, uh, was shot as his motorcade passed through this outdoor plaza, the front door of Dallas. Sandy. What is Daly? Yes, Daly Plaza. Nicely done. Good for 400. Choose again. Tennis vocabulary for 1,000. End it out. Ambrose Pierce described this as a temporary insanity curable by marriage. Watson. What is love? Love, yes. Ninety-eight percent sure on that answer. Yes. Here's the irony of that clue. Ambrose Pierce was married to seventeen. It was married for seventeen years to Molly Day. So apparently he didn't know what the answer to love was. All right, Watson, you have control of the board and twenty-two hundred bucks in your pocket. Go ahead. Scene of the crime for six hundred. One billion dollars was stolen from this city's central bank, March eighteenth, two thousand three, shortly before U.S. bombing began. City. What is Baghdad? Baghdad is a city. Good. For six. Go ahead. Scene of the crime for 800, please. The final conviction in, uh, in the, the 1963 bombing of this city's 16th Street Baptist Church didn't come for nearly 40 years. Watson. 
What is Birmingham? That is correct. Birmingham, Alabama is the city we're looking for. Nicely done. Do we want to finish it off or move on, Watson? Let's finish scene of the crime. Let's. An assassin fired two shots into William McKinley at the 1901 Pan American Exposition in this city. Watson. What is Buffalo, New York? Buffalo, New York is the city. Nicely done, Watson. Good for a thousand dollars there. Steven, your buzzer work okay, right? <laughs> You'll get it, you'll get it. Just relax, just shake it off, shake it off. We'll get you a child for your forehead if you need one. Watson, you have 400,000 4, bucks, 400,000 bucks. You're gonna have $4,000 and where do we go from here? Laundry detergent for 200. Laundry detergent for 200, here we go. Gladness or a shout of excitement. Steven! What is cheer? Cheer, yes! Bag, aren't we? <laughs> Good job, Steven. You have 200 bucks and control of the board. Go ahead. Um, let's stay with it. What is laundry detergent for 400? Laundry detergent for four. Three letter adjective for the Beatles. Steven? What is bug? <laughs> what is what is bug? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Watson or Cindy? <laughs> I would like to apologize for the remaining living members of the Beatles. <laughs> that six percent answer is incorrect. <laughs> What is fab? Fab. The fab four. Not gay. No. Yikes. All right. I don't care who has control of the board, really. Uh, Steven. Steven, you better quiet. Which one would you like, Steven? Um, let's stay with laundry detergent for eight, uh, 600. Laundry detergent for six. Here we go. Three letter word meaning the whole of. Sandy. What is all? All. A-L-L. -L. Nicely done. Go ahead, Cindy. Laundry detergent for 800? 800. Eb or neep, for example. Steven. What is tied? Tied. Nicely done. Good for 800 bucks and you're out of the hole. Like, 600. Good. Go ahead. Go ahead, Steven. Um, what is laundry detergent for 1,000? What is? All right. <laughs> Philip III, King of France from 1270 to 1285, was nicknamed this. Another word for brazen. Cindy. What is bold? Bold. Yes, he was. Good for a grand. Nicely done. We have three full categories. Where do we go from here, Cindy? Those animals frighten me for 200. Here we go. Torophobia. Cindy. What's a bull? That is correct. Nicely done. Lyle Lovett suffers from torophobia. I don't know what situation Lyle Lovett would find himself where he's in a room full of bulls, but okay, whatever. Go ahead, Cindy. <laughs> Those animals frighten me for 400. 400, here we go. For pedophobia. Watson. What is reptile? Reptile or snakes or lizards. Nicely done. Good for 400, Watson. Go ahead. Always in fashion for 200. Okay. It's the last name of the designer whose website is usa.tommy.com. Steven. Uh, what is the figure? That is correct. Good for 200. Nicely done. Go ahead. Um... Those animals frighten me for 600. Answer is... Bailey Double! Nicely done! All right, so for those of you that are familiar with the show, uh, Stephen, you only have $800, but you can bet up to 1000 So Stephen will be the only one that answers this clue. So you can bet whatever you like, but you can bet up to $1,000. I'm going to bet $200. $200? Yeah, let's not come negative. <laughs> That's a good safe bet. There you go. $200 on the table will bring you up to a thousand bucks even. Here's your clue, my friend. Hippophobia. <laughs> Don't say hippos. <laughs> well, then I can't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't give me the right answer, don't give me one at all. All right, you're, you're not going to try it? No. 
Okay. <laughs> All right, what are the fear of horses? Fear of horses from the Greek hippos, or horses, that's what hippos means in Greek. All right, so we take 200 bucks away, that drops you down to $600. Watson did come up with a correct answer there, but uh, he didn't have control of the board. Steven, you have control back. Where do we go? Let's go with always in fashion for 400. Always in fashion for four. Hello, designers. This Project One Way Man, aka the Silver Fox, is Chief Creative Officer at Liz Playborn. Watson. Who is Tim Gunn? Tim Gunn, exactly right. Nicely done, Watson. All right, choose again. Presidential line time for 200. This is a topic. Follow along here, folks. Barats and the impact animals. Cindy? What are Obama's llamas? Obama's llamas, that's exactly right. Barats and the That's a fun category. Where do we go from here, Cindy? Those animals frighten me for 800. Here we go. Vermophobia. Steven? Uh, what is fear of rats? No. Watson? What is vermin? No. <laughs> Cindy? Want to try it? Yes, go ahead. What is fear of rodents? No. What are the fear of worms? Yeah, of becoming infected by or fear of worms. That's a triple stumper, that's what we call it in Jeopardy. All right, so uh, Cindy, you have control of the board. Where do we go? Those animals frighten me for a thousand. Okay. Ilurophobia. Watson. What is cat? Cats. Fear of cats. That's exactly right. From the Greek, Iluros. Good for cats. All right, Watson, you have five grand. Where do we go from here? Presidential Ryan time for 400. 400 bucks. George W's rumps. <laughs> Cindy. What is Bush's tushes? Bush's tushes. <laughs> he only had 36 percent uh, uh, confidence on that one, but he did get it right. All right, go ahead, Cindy. Presidential rhyme time for 600. 600 it is. Zachary's padded envelopes. Cindy. What is it, Taylor's Mailers? Taylor's Mailers is correct. Zachary <laughs> Taylor, swap president. Nicely done. Where to? Always in fashion for over 600. 600. He was hired at age 17 as Christian Dior's assistant. After Dior's death four years later, he was head of the House of Dior. Watson. Who is St. Laurent? La, 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 la. Yes, I'm going to accept that. Yves Saint Laurent, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So we got the middle and the last, so I'll give it to him. Yves Saint Laurent is who we're looking for. Good job. Bring you up to $5,600, Watson. Where do we go? Presidential Ryan time for 800 800 Here we go. Herbert's strategic military exercises. Who got it? Steven did. What is Hoover's maneuvers? Hoover's maneuvers. Nicely done. Hughes tattoos. <laughs> Apparently, Herbert Hoover hung out in some biker bars. <laughs> A little known fact that we didn't know in history class. All right, go ahead, Stephen. Uh, what is presidential ride time for thousand? I love that you're putting it in the form of a question. Last one, presidential ride time. <laughs> James K's Ma and Pa. City. What are folks? Folks. Pope's folks, that's exactly right. Pope's folks. See, we have two clues left on the board. Which one would you like? I was in fashion for a thousand. Thousand bucks, here we go. Originally known for his menswear, this Italian created the AX line that features leisure and active sportswear. Watson. Who is Giorgio Armani? That's exactly right, and very well pronounced, I might add. Nicely done, Watson. <laughs> Our $800 clue is this. In 1967, he began marketing his unique line of ties under the name Polo. Cindy? Who's Ralph Lauren? Ralph Lauren, that's exactly right. Nicely done. So, our give a round of applause for Steven and Cindy. So what's going to happen now, like I said before, so Steven and Cindy both played our first round.